Okay, we've already looked at how the coefficient of drag varies with Reynolds number. It can also vary with a bunch of other dimensionless numbers. And we're going to look at the Mach number, Froude number, and relative roughness here. So these are two different aircraft, and looking at them, you can see there are some obvious design differences between the two. They're both designed for the same thing. They're both intended to carry lots of people over long distances. And, but you can see the top one, the 747, is quite a bit different than the Concorde down below it. They're both streamlined. The 747 is smooth, and it has uh, it kind of tapers on the back end. The wings also taper on the back end, although you can't really see it that well in this picture. But the Concorde on the bottom, you can see is it, the streamlining is much more exaggerated. It's, it's extremely streamlined. And the biggest difference, I think, is on the front end. Um, if you look at the tip of the Concorde, it is really pointy, whereas 747 has a fairly blunt tip. We've already seen how, with um, flow around a ball, how the front end, it doesn't really matter what, how you streamline the front end other than just making it smooth. What really matters is what happens on the back end. But that's not true for the Concorde, because the Concorde is a supersonic jet. So this aircraft travels uh, through a sonic boom and then faster than the speed of sound. And uh, the um, coefficient of drag changes significantly as you, as you cross that barrier. If we look at a figure of this, um, so this is the coefficient of drag as it changes with the Mach number, and this, these are pretty high Mach numbers. And if we start with the blunt objects, as you approach Mach 1, you can see a rapid increase in the coefficient of drag. What's going on here is the object is moving with the sonic booms. We have these really high increases in pressure, and it, it, the, the sonic boom, Mach 1, really, really does behave like a barrier that the aircraft has to cross. With um, the blunt objects, that high coefficient of drag continues all the way up to Mach 2 or 3 before it starts to level off. Um, with the pointy object, what you'll notice is that as it approaches Mach 1, it has a lower coefficient of drag, and once it exceeds Mach 1, pointy object um, that you see a decrease in the coefficient of drag. So ha having a pointy object in the direction of the flow really decreases coefficient of drag when you're approaching Mach 1 or surpassing it. Here's an extreme example. As far as I know, this is the fastest aircraft that, that has ever flown. They've recorded it at Mach 9.8. This is just a small prototype. I think it's the size of a size of a bed, basically, and it has to be carried to Mach four and then released. But it uses a, another technology uh, called a scramjet, at which um, one of its features is it harvests oxygen from the atmosphere and uses it in its in its combustion process. But anyway, so this is about as fast as we know how to go through the atmosphere. Coefficient of drag can also vary with relative roughness. This is a very complicated relationship, and um, it's hard to draw any generalities. A few things I can say is that if you have a laminar boundary layer, we know that roughness really has no impact on the coefficient of drag. Um, but if you have a turbulent boundary layer, the roughness may increase your coefficient of drag, and that's fairly obvious. You most um, boats and aircraft, things that move through fluids, we, we design them with smooth surfaces. Um, swimmers will often shave their bodies to reduce drag. Um, but it's actually more complicated than this. There, there's all kinds of exceptions. Like if you look at sharks, which are some of the fastest creatures in the ocean, they have really rough skin. In fact, dry shark skin can be used as sandpaper. And if you look at it carefully, it's got these denticles sticking out of it. And the, in some complicated relationship, these denticles break up the boundary layers 
and actually reduce drag. So this is not a straightforward relationship. Here's another um, strange thing that you can do with roughness. If you're at the correct Reynolds number, roughness can actually change the way the fluid flows around the object. So it can induce formation of a turbulent boundary layer and increase the coefficient, or I'm sorry, and decrease the coefficient of drag. So by making something more rough, in some cases, you can reduce its drag. Um, and here's the case for this. So this is how the coefficient of drag changes with the Reynolds number at a fairly high Reynolds number. And the solid line is for a sphere. And this is a portion of that figure we've seen before. This is up at the high end where we see that sudden drop off in the coefficient of drag. And if you remember, that's due to the formation of a turbulent boundary layer that wraps around the object, which leads to compression of the turbulent wake behind it, resulting in a significant drop in the coefficient of drag. Well, if we're at a Reynolds number of 10 to the fifth, we still have a fairly high coefficient of drag. But if you look at the dotted lines, if you roughen that sphere, you actually push that formation of a turbulent boundary layer to a lower velocity. So at that velocity, you have this huge drop in coefficient of drag, and basically you're cutting your drag in half, which, is, which has a huge impact. And this is what's going on with golf balls. Originally, golf balls were smooth, but players found that as they got banged up and nicked, they um, traveled farther and straighter. So now we roughen golf balls with these complicated dimpling patterns. And these, these dimples have a huge impact on the flight of a golf ball. <clears throat> a dimpled golf ball actually travels three times as far as a smooth golf ball. And there's other applications for this as well. Tennis balls, one of the reasons they're fuzzy is also to decrease drag. You get much higher velocity with a fuzzy tennis ball than with a smooth one. Here's a picture of two bowling balls. This is kind of a famous fluids experiment being dropped in water. And the one on the right has uh, a rough patch of sandpaper right on the tip. And you can see a huge difference in the... Um, in the trailing wake behind it. The, the one with the rough tip has compression of the wake and that's due to formation of that turbulent boundary layer from this because of the sandpaper in there and it results in less of a, of, a, of a smaller wake behind it which results in less coefficient of drag. In swimming this is done crazy things to swimming. They've developed these suits. These suits have, in, as far as I know, in 2010, I believe, these suits were outlawed from competitive ma matches. But they developed these swimming suits that do all kinds of, <clears throat> have all kinds of technology to reduce drag, including sections of roughness to um, decrease drag. Finally, the coefficient of drag also varies with the Froude number. If you remember the Froude number, it's, it's the momentum forces uh, compared with the gravity forces. <clears throat> and this has a big impact for objects moving on water surfaces, so for boats. Here's two um, jet skis, and you can see they're traveling in, in very different flow regimes. The one on the left is traveling at a low velocity. And when that happens, it kind of sinks down into the water. And as it propels forward, it, it, it produces waves. And that's wasted energy and results in a high coefficient of drag. The um, jet ski on the right, however, is traveling at a much higher velocity, which results in a high fruit number. The boat hydroplanes and pops out of the water. You get a huge decrease in your coefficient of drag.